for Good morning. My name is Hans Lee. I'm the Speaker's Officer of the Korea Future Forum, and it is my pleasure to have the honor of introducing our final keynote speaker, Mrs. Signe Ratso. Mrs. Ratso has been the Director and the Director General for Trade in the European Commission since 2007. Currently, she is responsible for trade strategy, analysis, and market access. She also oversees industrial sector aspects of the EU trade policy. Before joining the Commission, Mrs. Ratso worked as the Deputy Secretary General at the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Communications of the Republic of Estonia for 11 years. Now, without further ado, please join me in warm welcoming for Director General Signe Ratso. Um, good morning uh, to, to everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's my pleasure uh, to uh, uh, make a presentation to uh, this crowded audience here. Uh, so I'm really glad to see uh, such an interest uh, that uh, the EU-Korea uh, <coughs> trade relations have attracted. Sorry. <coughs> Uh, after, after two excellent presentations uh, that I had <coughs> this morning, well, I'm afraid London climate, even if it's not very different from Brussels, has, has <coughs> had an effect on me. Sorry. <coughs> um, um, as I said, that after two excellent presentations uh, that I've had um, by Frederick Erickson, who gave a very uh, good general background in terms of trade policy, but also in terms of the historical background uh, for, the, uh, for the EU FTAs, as well as um, the excellent uh, presentation of uh, Mr. Bark on the, on the careers uh, FTA policies, um, certainly this has made my task um, a lot easier. Uh, I will base my presentation uh, on the EU's uh, trade uh, strategy, which was approved um, in October uh, last year. Uh, but before that, um, just a few uh, more words of, of background. Uh, first of all, um, as um, since uh, 2011, one of my tasks have been also uh, to be in charge of EU-Korea FTA uh, implementation. Uh, certainly, this has made me very much familiar uh, with this agreement, uh, but has also uh, taken me regularly uh, to, to Seoul, uh, because in terms of implementation, we have uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the rounds, the, the meetings uh, alternating uh, between uh, Brussels and Seoul um, every year. And certainly I recognized um, this, which is today a very beautiful stream that Mr. Bark showed in Seoul. And actually it was the, uh, the first um, uh, site uh, that, um, uh, that attracted uh, my attention during my first visit to, to Seoul, which was actually in, in 2010, uh, when a Korea uh, had um, the G20 presidency. And then we had um, also a seminar discussing the future of the WTO. At that time, I was still responsible for WTO and multilateral issues uh, in, in DG trade in the, in the Commission. Um, and uh, it's, it's certainly amazing uh, how uh, much um, Korea has uh, been able uh, to change the country and its economy. Uh, in the last um, 50 years, as we've, uh, as we've um, uh, heard. Uh, and uh, certainly uh, opening, um, opening to trade uh, is uh, also a lot uh, to do with that, because even if uh, Korea started with, uh, with heavy uh, industrialized um, uh, uh, policies uh, in, its, um, in its development, as we've also heard that um, since the 90s, uh, it also started to, to open up, first multilaterally, uh, but also uh, has uh, lately had, um, had a very, uh, uh, mm, uh, very uh, clear mm, uh, uh, FTA uh, strategy as, as part of its um, economic, um, economic strategies. 
Uh, and when we come uh, to the EU-Korea FTA, we can also see that it is uh, in, in, uh, in various ways also uh, uh, as an example uh, for uh, additional FTA, um, uh, FTA negotiations on the, uh, on the EU side. Uh, now, uh, Frederick Eriksson also uh, described uh, quite at some length uh, which has uh, driven uh, the EU uh, towards uh, starting with a very uh, uh, challenging uh, uh, FTA, um, FTA negotiations, mentioning also uh, the, uh, the trade strategy Global Europe, dating back to, to, to 2006, which paved the way uh, to, uh, to FDA uh, negotiations at large. But still, I'd like to mention uh, one of um, additional elements uh, which uh, perhaps were not uh, that clear uh, from, from his presentation. Certainly, what was the, the main rationale in choosing uh, which, countries with, with, which countries to start FDA negotiations uh, was the, so to say, uh, a double uh, First, the, the economic uh, rationale, and in this economic rationale, uh, there were, so to say, the, the two important factors. Uh, one uh, was, the first one was, which uh, are the, the growing markets, the growing mar markets uh, for the future, and this uh, certainly uh, also uh, triggered uh, the negotiations in Asia, in Southeast Asia, uh, with the ASEAN countries, uh, with, uh, with South Korea, uh, but also with, with countries like, like India. The prospective uh, growing markets, but on the, other, uh, on the other hand, where we were facing, uh, uh, facing uh, protection, not only, well, both in terms of tariffs, but also non-tariff barriers, in order to, to use, make use of these FTAs in order to, uh, to get rid of, uh, of these uh, uh, of these um, uh, barriers. And certainly on top of that, the geopolitical, uh, geopolitical reasons as also uh, described by, by Frederick Eriksson. Uh, now, uh, since then, and, and what were then behind were mainly, so to say, the economic, uh, economic um, uh, uh, um, objectives. Now, if you already look at the, the title of our new trade strategy uh, for, the, uh, for the next years to, to, to come, it's called Trade for All and uh, towards a more responsible trade investment policy. And I will explain to you uh, in a minute why, uh, why now this, so to say, additional focus, uh, even if uh, even today, uh, the um, economic growth and jobs and the role of trade in economic growth and jobs uh, continues uh, to be as important as, uh, as in, the, in the past. We also have some, uh, some additional uh, focuses. Uh, uh, but before that, as uh, in your program, uh, the, uh, the, the title of my presentation is mentioned as EUFDA strategy, Europe as a collective entity. I thought that perhaps knowing that uh, this is the, uh, the very international audience here, and I'm, I'm not so sure uh, how much familiar you are uh, with, um, with the EU policies, how much these are part of your curriculum. Uh, curriculum here, uh, so I thought that perhaps it's, it's also important to, to mention uh, that why I speak uh, about EU trade policy is that since uh, the, the founding uh, treaty uh, of the uh, Treaty of Rome, uh, trade policy uh, is an exclusive competence uh, in the EU, meaning uh, that the European Commission negotiates on behalf of all the member states. And that's why we have uh, the, uh, the EU, uh, EU trade, policy, uh, trade policy as such. Uh, but now um, coming uh, to the, uh, the, uh, the key messages of the, of the new uh, trade strategy. Uh, first, what does uh, trade for all mean? Uh, I know that there will be also uh, the, the panel discussing also 
socio-political um, uh, effects of, uh, of our free trade um, agreements. Uh, uh, and uh, lately, we've also uh, have observed uh, that it's not only uh, the, uh, well, the, the companies who certainly are interested in, in better access to other markets, but also uh, the, uh, the consumers and public at large have a much greater interest uh, in, uh, in trade policy. Uh, that's why it's very important uh, first to deliver benefits to all, uh, that is to consumers, workers, uh, self-employed and citizens at large, uh, small, medium and uh, large enterprises, but also people in the, in the part of countries, in particular uh, in the poorest, in the developing uh, world. That's why it's not only economic objectives that we have uh, in the EU trade policy, but we also take into account EU policies, uh, policies at large. Uh, then, what does responsible mean? Uh, what do we mean by responsible? We mean uh, effective, uh, transparent, and based on EU values. And a few words about each of these um, components. Uh, now, why, uh, why did we need to uh, renew our trade, uh, uh, trade policy? Uh, there were actually various reasons uh, uh, for that. Uh, first of all, uh, there was a very clear need to respond uh, to the trade debate, uh, which has become uh, much uh, more conspicuous in the, uh, during the, the last few years. Uh, what one of the, the triggers uh, here has certainly been the, uh, the negotiations uh, with the U.S., uh, the TTIP negotiations. Uh, which uh, made it clear that uh, we do not anymore only uh, negotiate market access, uh, dismantling of, um, of uh, tariffs or better access to the, the services market, but we uh, much more negotiate also the, the rules uh, as well as, as non-tariff barriers, how to get rid of non-tariff barriers. And certainly EU Korea FTA uh, serves as a very good example uh, uh, in this respect. But when, we, when you speak about regulations, when you speak about this kind of rules, uh, then certainly uh, the, the citizens ask, yeah, but what does it mean for us? Uh, doesn't uh, it mean that that will be undermining of, uh, of our uh, protection of health, environment, this kind of aspects? That's why we really need to, to also to uh, respond to, to this, uh, this kind of uh, requests. Uh, now, the, the second uh, important um, moment is that, um, well, as, as also Frederick Erickson mentioned, uh, that uh, the, uh, the, um, the environment in which we, we negotiate uh, trade has changed. Uh, there are very clear changes uh, well, in particularly in the global value chains, uh, both in global and, and regional value chains, and that's why also the countries focus uh, in the regions where, uh, what are the, the basis of, of, their, uh, of their value chains in order to have uh, then also the, uh, the better uh, possibilities to, to take advantage of these uh, agreements. This also means that it's not, so to say, only about exports, that you are ne negotiating better access to the exporting markets, but you more and more you also depend on the imports, on the imports of raw materials, on the imports of, uh, of components, and you'd like to get those uh, at, a, at a better price, at, um, in better terms. And these, uh, this is also something that, uh, that is part of that. Um, a trade is, uh, is more uh, than before in the, um, in the focus uh, at the heart of the economy. Uh, one would say, for instance, in the EU, every seventh job depends on exports. Every seventh job uh, in terms of external EU trade that is outside the internal market. Certainly, if you add up the trade in the, in the, within the internal market, then it's, it's, it's much more. Uh, so it's more about lower prices, choice, and innovation. Now, 
uh, the the third, uh, mm, uh, so to say, the uh, the the underlining um, uh, factor is that we also need to reassess uh, the uh, the targets uh, for access to markets because, as a result of um, WTO uh, trade liberal liberalization as well as now uh, regional uh, liberalizations as a result of these um, uh, multitude of FTAs. It's not only about the, the tra tariff protection anymore, but, but also uh, in terms of new type of barriers and how you actually uh, uh, address those in, in trade uh, negotiations. And finally, we need to ensure that we get the most out of the existing trade deals, meaning uh, that trade implementation is uh, becoming ever more important. It's not uh, only that um, uh, the, uh, the objective is not to have nice commitments uh, in the text of the agreements, but actually uh, the need to deliver uh, the, uh, the changes, uh, changes on the ground. Now, as I said, what we mean by effective uh, is first uh, to take um, account of these new economic realities. I mentioned integrated global value chains, importance of imports, uh, and uh, the focus more on regulatory cooperation, where certainly international regulatory cooperation would be the, the most advantageous uh, for, for all economic uh, operators. Uh, but then uh, there are also the, uh, the other realities uh, because, well, as, as, uh, as mentioned also by, by Frederick Erickson, that at the time uh, when, for instance, um, GATT and GATT agreements were negotiated, uh, we didn't have this type of digital economy that we have now, uh, also meaning that e-commerce, digital economy, uh, these uh, new uh, types of, of, of trade, of uh, have to be um, uh, reflected uh, in, in our trade policy. IPR protection was also mentioned as, as one of the, the rules uh, that, uh, that we address uh, in, in negotiations. And for instance, as um, it, was, um, it was mentioned by Mr. Bach, uh, it has been also for Korea advantageous to take advantage of the EU uh, Korea FTA in order to enhance its IPR protection, which is actually uh, uh, advantages for the, for the country's economy as, as such. Uh, then servicification of the economy, which has also uh, been started uh, to be referred as, as mode five uh, type of service, uh, namely uh, the, the services which are part of the industrial goods that we trade whether it's the design, uh, whether it's the, uh, the, um, uh, also uh, the, uh, the way these are manufactured, which are becoming an inherent part of, of, the, of the goods trade. Um, then uh, what is uh, then also part of this responsible uh, trade agenda and more value-based uh, trade agenda is that uh, trade liberalization should go hand in hand with sustainable development uh, because these are part of the EU values, uh, protection of health, protection of the environment. Uh, then uh, the, uh, when I speak about uh, particularly services trade, uh, then mobility of professionals uh, is ever more important. Whether these professionals provide after service of the products that have been uh, uh, that have been exported, either machinery, uh, well, automobiles, or whatever, uh, or uh, as these uh, already becoming inherent of the of the goods adjustment in labour markets, all these kind of, of issues that need uh, to be uh, also addressed in, in trade policy. Now, as I mentioned, uh, that um, the more agreements uh, we conclude, uh, the, the, uh, the more important uh, their implementation and enforcement uh, uh, becomes. And here, it's not only the Commission uh, that has a role to play, uh, but it's also uh, very m much the, the role of the Member States, because the Member States have the 
uh, the customs officials, and if we later have a look how uh, actually uh, the preferences that, for instance, EU Korea FTA uh, has provided are made use in, in different economic operators in different member states, you can also see that it uh, very largely varies. And it's not something that the EU can solve, but it's part of how the, the customs works in member states and how uh, the, the type of trade facilitation uh, measures, uh, measures are actually applied. Uh, then we need also to address specific needs of small and medium-sized companies uh, for whom uh, it's, um, well, on the one hand, uh, for them, FTAs uh, are actually the, the most advantageous because they do not have uh, the same amount of resources of big companies in order to deal with, uh, with market access barriers. And that's why they disproportionately benefit uh, from uh, the market openings as well as dismantling of non-tariff uh, barriers. However, for them, it's, it's not always easy even to get information uh, what are the, uh, uh, the, the requirements in different markets. That's why we also need specific attention uh, to, uh, to the SMEs. And um, in this respect, um, uh, TTIP, uh, EU-US uh, agreement is, uh, is a, uh, so to say, sets the precedent in, in this area because we are negotiating uh, a specific um, chapter on, on SMEs uh, with, with US and in our trade strategy, we also announced that it will be a part of our, our new, uh, uh, new uh, so to say, the, the model uh, also uh, for, for other negotiations, uh, meaning that that should be dedicated, as a result, dedicated web portals uh, where the SMEs get access to information how to do trade uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with the country. Uh, then there are dedicated SME uh, provisions uh, and also regular surveys uh, how, uh, how actually the, the SMEs could take uh, the, uh, the benefits. Now, the, um, the next slide um, also shows something which we've, um, we've seen also in the, in the previous presentations, um, namely how um, after four years of implementation as uh, uh, on the 1st of July this year, we are coming to the fifth year of implementation of EU Korea FTA, but after uh, a four years impl implementation, uh, if you um, compare the change in EU, US, uh, China, and Japan's shares of South Korean imports, uh, then uh, you can see uh, that uh, actually uh, the EU has uh, made, so to say, uh, has really taken advantage of the FTA and has been able to, to increase its, its shares um, uh, much more than the, uh, than the, uh, than the, the other countries. Uh, however, uh, as I said, that uh, when, we, uh, when we compare how effectively uh, the, uh, these um, preferences are actually utilized, uh, then what we could see that after the first uh, year of implementation, uh, this um, utilization rate, uh, meaning that the number of companies who actually uh, used uh, the um, uh, the, uh, the, the preference rates and not the most, um, um, most favored um, uh, MFN rates uh, was only 40%. On the Korean side, it was 70%. Now, gradually each year, also uh, the, um, the um, use of preferences on the EU side uh, has uh, improved. Uh, so, uh, it was uh, the, um, between 40 and 80 percent uh, in different member states, but you can see that if you compare 40 and 80, that uh, this, is, uh, this is a real uh, difference. Uh, there were also differences um, between the, um, the sectors. The highest uh, use was in agriculture, 81 uh, percent, and it's also no wonder because the MFN rates uh, are the highest in the, in the agriculture, so it, it really makes sense to, to use the, the preference rates. 
but it's also the, the highest, other highest rates are found in transport equipment, uh, uh, live animals, animal uh, products. And in the transport equipment, uh, also as, as we've seen, uh, that uh, there used to be uh, uh, the, the peaks in tariffs previously, that's why it's also made, uh, has made economic sense, uh, namely to, to, to use uh, the, the preference rates. Uh, now, getting back to the, um, and before, uh, also highlighting the, um, the, the benefits of EU3 FTA, uh, now, uh, more broadly, uh, what is part of the EU FTA uh, agenda uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the next uh, four years to, to, to come? Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the priority that you can find um, in, um, in President Juncker's uh, priority list is uh, TTIP, EU-US uh, agreement. Uh, and it's also understandable because it's uh, the, the biggest in agreement in terms of, of trade covered, but also uh, expecting to, to go uh, really deep um, uh, into the, uh, into the uh, regulatory issues. Uh, certainly, uh, the uh, conclusion of EU-Japan FTA uh, is uh, a very important uh, priority. Uh, and formalization of CETA, that is EU-Canada FTA, uh, which one would say that has been building uh, a lot on the, uh, the EU-Korea FTA, on its, on its focus, and it it's, uh, certainly also uh, is getting uh, very much into the, the rules um, and, uh, and regulatory uh, issues. Uh, now, uh, it's no wonder that, as, um, that um, a Asia Pacific uh, continues uh, to be um, the, the pri priority region uh, to develop trade relations because of the um, uh, economic growth aspects, also because uh, uh, still quite a few countries in this uh, region uh, continue uh, to have significant trade barriers, so it would make sense to have deep um, uh, FTAs with them in order to, to get uh, rid of uh, both uh, tariff as well as, as non-tariff barriers. Um, now, uh, in addition to EU uh, Korea FTA, we've already uh, also concluded um, negotiations with Singapore and most uh, lately uh, with, uh, with Vietnam. And for instance, if we compare uh, the, uh, to which extent Vietnam opened uh, up uh, to T uh, TPP and uh, what uh, we've um, actually uh, have um, been able to, to get uh, on the EU-Vietnam um, FTA, then you can also see that we go deeper in, in quite a few areas, uh, which is also understandable because if you have these regional uh, mega regional uh, negotiations then they, they tend to be uh, the, uh, the, um, the lowest common denominator that, uh, that, um, uh, that prevails. So in, in quite a few areas uh, actually we can say that, um, that we, the, the results are better. Now on the, uh, on the other uh, countries and other types of negotiations uh, well, since the, the Lisbon Treaty, we also have exclusive competence, not only for trade, but also investment agreements, investment protection agreements, which formerly were ne negotiated by EU member states. Uh, that's why now with our FTA partners, uh, also investment agreement uh, is becoming uh, also uh, as an inherent part of FTAs. Uh, with South Korea, with whom we, we actually concluded the negotiations um, uh, before, now we will also explore investment uh, negotiations, uh, but there are also some of the areas which <coughs> may need amendment in the FTA, uh, that's why uh, these investment uh, negotiations uh, will uh, also be combined uh, with the amendments in the, uh, in the current FTA. Uh, investment negotiations are with China. Uh, 
very uh, important, uh, no doubt, because uh, the uh, well, the EU uh, countries, uh, the EU companies have a have a good base already uh, in investing in China, but still the economic environment there uh, continues to be very very challenging. Uh, that's why uh, the, uh, we, we pin a lot of hope also on the, on the results of, of these uh, negotiations. Uh, then uh, exploration of investment uh, negotiations with Hong Kong and Taiwan, also mentioned in the, in the strategy. And uh, then uh, the um, uh, uh, launching negotiations with, uh, with, Austria, uh, with Australia and New Zealand, also members of the of the, of the TPP as well, and uh, starting negotiations with Philippines and Indonesia when appropriate. This also depends at what time and to which extent uh, they are actually prepared uh, to, uh, to, uh, to the, the kind of deep and comprehensive uh, FTA, uh, FTA that, uh, that we are negotiating. There is also some hope that we could renew uh, the uh, negotiations with, with India, but it's um, uh, because there are indications at the, also at the highest political level that there is the, um, uh, also uh, the intention uh, on the Indian side, but there is again the question uh, whether India is prepared uh, to, uh, uh, to conclude uh, an FTA which goes uh, further and, and deeper than, than any of the, of the previous um, FTAs uh, that, uh, that they negotiated. Uh, well, certainly uh, the relations with, with ACP countries, um, uh, not only from the uh, perspective of trade, but also a developmental uh, perspective uh, continue uh, to be uh, important for the EU. Uh, we've uh, concluded um, uh, quite a few regional agreements, uh, economic partnership agreements or EPAs uh, with, with ACP countries. Now we also need to deliver effective implementation of those. Uh, then um, uh, Mexico and Chile, by the way, were the countries with whom uh, the EU the already had FTAs before our global uh, Europe uh, strategy, uh, uh, but now because they are, what we, uh, as we refer to them, the, the old um, uh, area uh, mm, uh, agreements uh, also, uh, there is um, the, uh, now the, um, uh, as part of the strategy is, is also to modernize uh, those, uh, those agreements. With Turkey, we have a customs union, but this customs union is not a comprehensive one. It doesn't um, uh, include all the, uh, all the sectors. That's why also the modernization of, of this agreement is, is, is part of the, of the plans. Now with Latin America, actually, we have a stalled uh, negotiations with, with Mercosur, uh, which uh, now there is some hope that we can also restart uh, these, uh, negoti uh, these negotiations. And certainly the neighborhood, both uh, in, the, uh, in the east and uh, in the south, uh, uh, continues to be an uh, important um, part, of, um, part of our strategy. Uh, now, uh, coming uh, back to the EU-Korea FTA, as I said, uh, that um, this is so far the, the most ambitious trade agreement ever implemented by the EU and also a prime example as a new generation uh, FTA. And uh, now what I'll uh, just um, uh, uh, stop a few um, minutes on what we've um, now, the, uh, the, the members of my team, uh, the, the trade um, analyst uh, unit have also um, uh, carried out an econo econometric analysis uh, studying uh, the, um, uh, the uh, anticipation and trade policy uh, uncertainty effects and uh, also uh, uh, seen that the, the benefits uh, from the FTA actually occurred even before the entry into effect in the anticipation and just explaining uh, that um, a bit to, to you. 
Uh, namely, uh, what we've seen is that um, bilateral trade uh, increased even before the FTA entered into force, uh, which happened as of the 1st of July uh, 2011. Uh, namely, uh, they made a comparison uh, between the, the period before the start of negotiations in January 2005 to April 2007, and then the period after the uh, entry into force in July uh, 2011 to June uh, 2014. Uh, now, and what it uh, shows is uh, that um, actually uh, the impact uh, of EU exports is um, uh, really uh, substantial, uh, even before uh, the um, uh, before it entered uh, into effect, and this effect is uh, much more conspicuous on the on the EU side than on the uh, Korean side. Uh, why uh, why such an asymmetry, you may ask? Uh, first, uh, it is uh, to be expected given the initial differences in the trade policy environment, uh, namely EU exporters had more to gain. Uh, because uh, in, uh, in the quite a few sectors and the most uh, uh, interesting sectors for the e exporters, there were previously uh, higher, higher tariff, um, uh, tariffs and, and tariff peaks. Uh, but um, surprisingly, there are also high effects for products already duty-free. And uh, here, uh, the reason is uh, that uh, uh, in the, um, in, the, um, in, the, in the GATT uh, schedules, uh, well, all countries uh, bind uh, their tariffs at a certain rate, uh, and normally uh, they actually uh, use lower tariff rates, so to say, leaving um, a kind um, of um, uh, water uh, between the applied and the bound uh, tariffs. Uh, so to say, the, the policy space, so that they are still able to, to increase uh, the, uh, the tariffs. Uh, the EU, in the EU, as in, in all, uh, well, normally in the, um, in the developed economies, while the uh, applied uh, tariffs are equal uh, to the bound ones, but in the, in the case of Korea, there are still in, in some sectors uh, where, uh, where uh, these, uh, these um, are, uh, there is uh, quite some significant difference uh, between, between those. Uh, so uh, binding uh, via the FTA removes uh, uncertainty and also there were expectations of uh, getting benefits from MTB uh, reductions. So, uh, this uh, translates into uh, the so-called uh, spillover uh, effects. Uh, now, what we can see uh, in the fourth year of FTA, uh, EU exports of goods uh, to Korea have increased uh, by 55% compared to the year before uh, uh, the FTA took uh, effect. At the same time, also Korean exports have increased even though less than uh, EU exports. And the reasons for that, I think, were already uh, explained uh, by the previous speakers, uh, namely decreased, uh, first and foremost, the, the most uh, significant um, uh, reason uh, that um, uh, EU demand has uh, decreased after the global economic crisis. But one additional factor, which was not mentioned by uh, by previous speakers is also the, uh, the, uh, the fact that uh, large Korean companies have invested already outside Korea and uh, including in the EU. Uh, uh, such uh, companies as Samsung, but also uh, in, the, uh, in the car sector, uh, Kia and Hyundai have uh, very big investments uh, in, uh, in quite a few uh, of, the, of the EU member states. So it's not, well, it's, it's not only, uh, and so we've, we've also uh, made a study on, uh, uh, on the effects of trade uh, liberalization uh, on the car sector, and uh, one of the results of this study showed that actually uh, trade in, in cars and car parts, which is a very important sector for, for Korean economy, <coughs> 
the supply chains actually uh, tend to be more regional or uh, in other words, uh, you, uh, you'd, uh, uh, because it's, it's, uh, it's a big volume, uh, then you do not export uh, the, uh, the, the cost, but it, you'd rather invest in the country and then uh, export the, uh, the, uh, the car parts. This actually has been uh, a win-win situation because uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the Korean cars are present in the EU uh, market. Uh, the, the companies have been uh, able to, to take advantage uh, of that, uh, that situation and also having uh, uh, then uh, the, the possibility to import uh, parts, uh, uh, tariff-free or with much lower tariffs. It's also a win-win uh, for, uh, for the EU member states who now have been able to create jobs in the, uh, in the, in the car sector. Uh, now, um, what I've already mentioned before, uh, this policy uh, space uh, between the MFN applied and MFN uh, bound uh, sectors. And, uh, uh, well, uh, if you see, uh, for instance, uh, in the, uh, which is uh, important uh, in the, uh, uh, in, the, in the transport equipment uh, where MFN uh, bond level is actually uh, has been uh, 81%. Uh, certainly this uh, effect uh, is uh, something to, to do uh, in this anticipation uh, effect of the, uh, of the, of the FTA. Uh, now, uh, what has been uh, already mentioned by previous speakers that um, certainly um, uh, trading goods uh, have uh, particularly um, increased uh, in uh, the fully uh, or partially in, uh, liberalized um, sectors. Uh, and uh, this uh, actually on both sides, uh, on, the, on the EU and, and Korean side. And uh, now coming to the sectors which have benefited uh, most uh, here, uh, the motor vehicles uh, sector uh, certainly uh, comes, uh, uh, comes first. And this is uh, a sector where uh, the uh, EU exporters have particularly been able to increase uh, the, the exports uh, and uh, also uh, to, uh, as, a, as a whole, uh, EU has been able to, to change uh, its previous uh, uh, negative uh, trade balance uh, into, um, uh, into the, yes, I can see that I have five minutes left. <laughs> uh, uh, the, um, so this is the, uh, the, uh, the, the motor uh, vehicle sector is, uh, is um, which has actually benefited not only uh, from uh, the tariff liberalization, but also uh, from, the, um, from the dismantling of non-tariff uh, barriers. And now I come to the, uh, the, uh, the rules part, uh, which is also an inherent part uh, of our, uh, our FTAs, uh, namely uh, Korea FTA was the first uh, where we also had sexual annexes uh, for free sectors, uh, motor vehicles and parts, electronics and uh, pharmaceuticals and medical devices. And uh, the, the main purpose of these annexes is namely uh, also to reduce the uh, non-tariff uh, barriers. Uh, what uh, is, is part of the, uh, the, for instance, motor vehicles is uh, the equivalence for key standards and certification procedures. Uh, namely uh, using uh, the uh, UNEC uh, standards, which is the uh, uh, international organization dealing uh, with standardization of, of cars and, and car parts, uh, and which certainly has enabled uh, the, uh, the exports uh, on both sides. Uh, then uh, in the air area of electronics, for instance, uh, acceptance of certificates and uh, tests made in the EU uh, and even a self-certification for certain uh, products. Uh, now, uh, on the basis of these uh, sectoral annexes, and, and here I have also the responsibility for implementing uh, 
uh, that, uh, that part, particularly in the um, in this um, uh, in this um, uh, agreement. We have also annual meetings uh, discussing uh, uh, the implementation and also implementation in, in different sectors. Uh, and um, this uh, has uh, a tribal purpose. First, it's the, a good forum to discuss, uh, well, uh, the implementation, uh, but not only the implementation, but also um, uh, dealing with the trade barriers before, even before they materialize. Because it's also a good forum to uh, discuss uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the trade barriers, uh, particularly in, in those sectors. And we also have been able to uh, bring resolution of several uh, barriers uh, in the FTA provisions. But we've also learned that there are limits uh, because we did not uh, anticipate uh, all the issues uh, when we negotiated the agreement. And certainly, this is also a good uh, lesson to be learned uh, for our future negotiations and certainly now uh, in the future negotiations, uh, whether it's uh, with the U.S. Uh, or uh, other countries uh, where uh, also the, uh, the, the different uh, industrial sectors are important, uh, we are already can base uh, those uh, on the experience that we've gained uh, from EU-Korea uh, FTA. Uh, so I'd uh, stop here and uh, thank you very much for your kind attention.